As orbital theory developed, it became necessary to find a way to refer to specific electrons within an atom. But it's not a simple thing to do because you can't identify electrons by their position. Remember that there's a nucleus and there are all sorts of electrons traveling all around it and they're just flying around in a somewhat random manner. And so you can't look at a snapshot of an atom at any point in time and figure out exactly which electron is which. And that's how quantum numbers were developed. Quantum numbers are a set of four numbers that if you know them, you can identify a specific type of electron within an atom. And so essentially the four quantum numbers all mean something different and each electron has its unique combination of these four that can help you describe the qualities of that electron. The first quantum number is the primary quantum number and that simply tells you which shell you're in. So if it's an electron that's in a 1s orbital then that is going to be something with an n value of 1. If it's in the 3d orbital then it will have an n value of 3. And so within any atom, the primary quantum number can have a value from 1 to n, where n is the maximum shell in that atom. So if it goes up to a 3d, for example, then an electron within that atom could have a primary quantum number of either 1, 2, or 3. The second quantum number is the angular quantum number and that tells you about what subshell it's in or what orbital type. And so the s orbital is assigned an l number of 0, p has an l of 1, d has an l number of 2. And within any particular atom, an electron can have a angular quantum number of anywhere from 0, meaning s, to n minus 1. So once again, if we're dealing with something where the highest energy electron is in the 3d orbital, the maximum L number it can have is going to be 3 minus 1, which is 2. And it just so turns out that 2 is equal to the d orbital. So that kind of makes sense and it tells you that the highest orbital type you can have in something that reaches the 3 shell is going to be a d orbital. But within that atom, you can also have some that are in s orbitals and some that are in p orbitals. Once we've established the shell and the subshell or the orbital type that it's in, our next job is to identify within that subshell which of the actual orbital clouds is it in. Recall that the p orbital has three different clouds. One is oriented like this, one is oriented toward you, and one is oriented in this direction. And so the third quantum number, the magnetic quantum number, which is represented as m sub l, tells you about the specific orbital cloud. And that has a range of anywhere from negative l to l. And so if you're in the s orbital, there's only one of those. And so the only value possible, if your l number is zero, meaning an s orbital, the only possible magnetic number is going to be zero as well. Now if you're in the p orbital, then you have the range of values from negative 1 to 0 to 1. And so that means that you have three possible values for which cloud it is in within the p subshell. And so the third one takes you from not just the type of orbital, but which of the exact orbitals are you in. Notice that when you get to the d orbitals, then you have values from negative 2 to positive 2. So it's negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, or 2. And that just happens to be the five clouds that are contained within the d orbital. And as you move to the f orbital, which is represented by 3, the f orbital has values from negative 3 to 0 to positive 3, which equals seven different clouds. And that's the exact number of clouds that there are within the f subshell as well. So remember that your magnetic quantum number, which is m sub l, can range from negative l to positive l, and that tells you a lot about how many distinct clouds there are and which specific cloud your electron is in. Finally, we know that there are two electrons that can fit into any one orbital cloud, and we need a way of describing them to distinguish those two electrons from each other. Remember that no two electrons can have the exact same quantum numbers. 
But if they're in the same shell, subshell, and cloud, then we need a way of distinguishing those two. What they established was simply a spin quantum number, the M sub S, which is an arbitrary number that we've decided on. It's going to either be a plus one half or a minus one half, and that's simply a way of distinguishing the two electrons. So within the same cloud, the two electrons will have the same N, L, and ML number, but one of them will be assigned plus one half, and the other will be assigned negative one half. And once you understand what all of these quantum numbers mean, it allows you to very, very quickly identify which electron is being referred to, and it can help you solve some problems about the nature of the atom if the quantum numbers are given, but the atom itself is not described to you in a problem. Mm -hmm.